Congratulations to Jonas Vingo on winning a second Tour de France title. This marks another huge achievement in the career for the former fish packer from Jutland, Denmark. This also means that Jumbo Visma have won their third Grand Tour title in the past year. As the sun sets over Paris, let's take a look back on these three weeks of racing and ask the question, how did Jonas Vingo win the Tour de France again? Since winning the Tour de France last year, Jonas Vingo's career has taken a very different direction. After becoming an overnight star following the Tour de France last year, Jonas Vingo stayed out of the spotlight for the rest of 2022. However, in 2023, things felt very different. Until last year's Tour de France, Vingo had only won one stage race, but this year, he won many. The Grand Camino at the beginning of the year, the World Tour level Tour of the Basque Country, as well as the prestigious Criterium de Dauphiné one month before the Tour de France. The only race he entered and didn't win this year was Paris-Nice back in March when Pogacar dominated the race, leaving Vingo in third place. This year, Vingo was winning everything he touched, it seemed. Last year, he seemed like a maverick leader, but this year he had demonstrated real command of the Jumbo Visma squad and all of his rivals. Along with his teammates Tish Benoit, Nadine van Hooydonk, Christophe Laporte, Wout van Aert, Wilco Kelderman, Dylan van Barla, and of course Sepp Kuss, Jumbo Visma had a clear battle plan for the Tour de France. However, one rival seemed to stand in the way of repeating Tour de France success, Tadej Pogacar. After a close fought battle in 2022, Pogacar and Vingo emerged as the two dominant favourites for the Tour de France appearing in a stratosphere of their own. With the two renewing their fight once more in the tour, the tribal fight between them was sure to be as exciting as ever. With Pogacar returning from a wrist injury and Vigo on soaring form, opinions were still split on which of these rivals would come out with the yellow jersey in three weeks' time. However, as they always say, the road did the talking. The Battle Royale began in Bilbao on July 1st. On that opening stage at the Côte de Pique, the penultimate climb of the day, Vingago and Pogacar crossed paths at the Tour de France once again, attacking over the top of the climb together. Despite a roll of the dice for the stage win, Pogacar's teammate Adam Yates flew off the front with his twin brother Simon to contend the stage win. Behind, Pogacar and Vingago came across the line in the second group, with Pogacar arms aloft in third place. The next day, the two attacked again, this time for the time bonifications at the top of the climb. Even though Pogacar wanted to keep up the tempo for the stage win over that climb, Vigo held back in order to help his teammate Wout van Aert for the stage win. This backfired as confidence as Victor Lafay took a late jump and secured a surprise stage win for the French. With Pogacar in third, UAE had the early upper hand with some vital bonus seconds and the yellow jersey. The next days were all about keeping calm before the explosion in the Pyrenees. And an explosion it was beginning with a return to La Reims, where Pogacar claimed his first Tour de France stage back in 2020. This year, it was Jumbo who controlled the final climb though, with Sepp Kuss digging deep. As Kuss completed his job, Vingago attacked, leaving Pogacar with no answer. The gap soon opened up to around one minute as Pogacar crumbled on the slopes of the Marie Blanc. Vingago continued on the hard pace up in front. Whilst Pogacar was joined by the rest of the top 10 contenders, it looked as though Vingago was gaining big time. However, whilst this was all going on, it was easy to forget about Jai Hindley of Bora Hansgrohe, who was still up the road ahead of Vingago, targeting the stage win and the yellow jersey, both of which fell into his arms. Vingago came home fifth on the stage, 34 seconds behind Hindley, but one minute and four seconds ahead of Tadej Pogacar. Jonas's effort wasn't enough to take the yellow jersey, but he did create a sizable gap between himself and Tadej Pogacar, who looked to be on the back foot after the first five stages. The next day, Jumbo tried to capitalize on the weak Pogacar, setting a high pace all day over the Tourmalet. On this penultimate climb of the day, Jonas and Tade attacked, isolating themselves from all the other favorites, including the yellow jersey of Jai Hindley. The leading duo bridged up to Wout van Aert from the breakaway, and Jonas Vingo was looking in a perfect position to take more time on Tade Pogacar. However, the script was almost too predictable, and Pogacar launched an attack, dropping Vingo on the final drag to the finishing line. With the final bow with the finishing line in Cotre, Pogacar cut his deficit in half to Vingo. That said, Vingo had gained enough time to take the race leader's yellow jersey, as Jumbo's raid in the Pyrenees could be concluded as successful. The next rendezvous would come at the weekend at Puy de Dome. After 30 years of no racing up the giant of Auvergne, the Tour de France returned for a summit finish. 
There it was all about Pogaccia and Vingegaard once more. With Pogaccia looking to have more momentum in his court after his stage win, he remained on the wheels of Vingegaard and Kuss until the final two kilometers, where he launched his attack for the yellow jersey. Vingego dangled behind, never leaving Tade out of sight. By controlling his efforts here, Vingego fought against himself and against the major blow-up here on Puy Dom. That said, Pogaccia did gain some vital time, lowering that GC deficit once more. By gaining an important 8 second advantage, the gap in GC was now 17 seconds as the race went into the first rest day. The tour was like a seesaw between the two. Pogaccia gains, Jonas gains. Pogaccia loses, Jonas loses. It was unpredictable to say the least. The second week of the tour opened up with chaos. Through the Massif Central, the race blew up with some hectic fights for the breakaway and tired legs. As the old guns fought for breakaway stage wins, Pogaccia and Vingo remained poised in the GC fight, waiting for the mountains to arrive on stage 13 to Grand Colombier. UAE controlled affairs at the Grand Colombier, trying to bring back the lone Mihal Kwiatkowski out in front. The pole was steadfast, taking the stage in style at the top of the pyramid of the Bouget as it's known. Behind, Pogaccia launched his bid for the stage podium on a climb he had won at in the past. Vingo couldn't hold on and Pogaccia reached out for another pocket full of seconds, bringing the GC gap down to 9 seconds. Into the Alps on stage 14, Pogaccia and Vingo clashed royally on the final slopes of the day at the Jeu Plan. The ding dong between Yumbo and UAE was never more visible. Kuss and Yates served their role as super domestiques, whilst Pogaccia and Vingo did the talking. With 3 kilometers left in the climb, Pogaccia went on the offensive, initially dropping Jonas. However, with another measured effort, Vingo clawed his way back onto Pogaccia's wheel with one kilometer left of the climb. The two then stalled, looking at each other whilst the riders behind sniffed a chance of returning into the frame. Pogaccia tried once more, but motorbikes impeded on his effort. Evidently frustrated, Pogaccia missed Vingo's attack over the top of the climb where he took vital bonus seconds. Pogaccia was calculating, and the eights came back and Carlos Rodriguez attacked over the top of the group fighting for the stage win. He would go on for glory in Morzine, whilst Pogaccia and Vingo were playing in the GC arithmetic game. Despite finishing second, Pogaccia lost a second in the GC fight. Jonas therefore sat 10 seconds ahead in GC. It would all be repeated the next day at saint gervais mont -Blanc. Another day in the mountains, another stalemate it seemed. Despite Pogaccia having stronger team support in the final kilometer, the Slovenian couldn't shake off the reigning champion Jonas Vingo, who remained 10 seconds ahead. Pogaccia was giving it his all, but Jonas wasn't cracking. It felt as though for Vingo, the best was still to come. Tuesday, July 18th, stage 16 of the Tour de France. This would have been underlined, highlighted, with a big old ring around it in the diaries of Jumbo Visma. With just 10 seconds separating our two protagonists, the Tour de France was on the knife edge, and this time trial provided a perfect opportunity for things to change. That said, the race of truth was on the cards, a race where the clock doesn't dare lie. First of the two rivals to start was the white jersey of Tadej Pogacar. The Slovenian looked strong and enjoyed the luxury of breaking the intermediate times through the course. However, these wouldn't stand for long as the yellow jersey behind him roared around the TT course in the shadows of Mont Blanc. Looking down at his power meter, Vingo couldn't believe what he was seeing. He thought it was broken. By sailing through the intermediate time check with Herculean efforts, Vingo was on course to smash his rival Pogacar's time at the finishing line and take the ultimate leap forward in this Tour de France by taking 1 minute and 38 seconds on Pogacar. This was a huge advantage on just a 20 kilometer long time trial. With this time good enough to not only win the stage, but to obliterate the standings, Jonas had put in one of the great efforts in recent Tour de France history. This was a time trial for the ages. Former world champion Tom de Milan described it as the best time trial he had ever seen. With 4.4 seconds gained per kilometer, this is the largest winning margin at a Tour de France time trial in the 21st century. Superlatives don't do this justice. Vingo was the lion tamer, Julius Caesar of the Tour de France, le chef du tour. Nothing seemed to be stopping him now. The next day, the Tour de France felt hungover almost, still recovering from the night before. Where was the race to go from here? After the tete a tete over the past couple weeks, Vingo looked superior. How could UAE overcome this gulf in the GC standings? Well, for Pogaccia, the stage began in wobbly terms. A crash on the opening hour of racing saw him kiss the alpine concrete. Sensing blood in the water, Jumbo Visma circled the front of the peloton. As the race swinged onto the final 10 kilometers of the tour's hardest and highest climb, the Col de la Luz, Pogaccia was at the rear end of the group, with an open jersey and distraught look on his face. The wheels opened up, and Pogaccia soon lost contact with the yellow jersey group and the Tour de France title. 
In that moment, a sense of relief hit Jumbo Visma as they looked behind to see no white jersey in the frame. Showtime for Vingegaard then, and he shook away all of his contenders off his wheel, bridging up to the colony of teammates still up the road from the breakaway. One by one he sailed past them all, all the way to the top of the Côte de la Loz, with an insurmountable advantage on any other GC contender. The effort wasn't enough to overcome the early breakaway riders, but Vingo certainly had a big statement in the GC on this stage 17. For Tari Pogaccia, his disaster week in the Alps only continued, losing five and a half minutes on the stage, crossing the line with Marc Soler, his teammate, in what can only be described as a heartbreaking image. Leaving the Alps with a new 7 minutes and 35 second advantage on the GC ahead of Pogaccia, Vingago could start booking his celebratory dinner in Paris. With one stage left in the mountains, Vingago negotiated his way up to the Vosges mountains for that final showdown. Despite an attempt to jump in the early breakaway on stage 20, Vingago played it defensive. Surprising for a man 7 minutes ahead in the GC. Instead, Vingago followed the wheels of Pogaccia. Fixed to his back wheel, much like he had been for the first two weeks of the Tour de France, Vingago remained in the mix for the stage win. He wouldn't be doing this solo, though his podium buddies of Adam Yates and Pogaccia were right by his side. There was no luck for Vingago in the final dash to the line as Pogaccia sealed another stage win on this tour. But with the stage successfully negotiated, Vingo was the winner-elect of the Tour de France. With an over 7 minute advantage to Pogaccia in the final GC standings, and over 10 minutes to Adam Yates in 3rd place, Vingo is the undisputed champion of the Tour de France. With the support of his teammates, Jumbo Visma have pulled off another spectacular Tour de France victory. With great pragmatism and prowess, Jumbo cold-bloodedly calculated this Tour de France in clinical yet dominant style. I'm sure there are plenty more chapters to be added in Jonas Vingegaard's Tour de France story in the years to come. The day now has two wins to his name and I am confident Jumbo will want more. Nevertheless, after three weeks of exciting racing, that's how Jonas Vingegaard won the 2023 Tour de France. With that, that's everything from this 2023 Tour de France retrospective video. You can comment down below what your favourite moment of this Tour de France was, and you can also stay tuned for our post Tour de France coverage here on the Cycling Dane and Cycling Dane Extra channels. Thank you very much for watching this video, and thank you all for tuning in throughout the 2023 Tour de France. It really means a lot to us. Well, that's everything. Thank you for watching, and we will see you around.